Hi, I'm Adam Porter. I'm the designer of the games Picoco, Quasal, Zooligans, and several others. And throughout this pandemic, like many of you, I'm sure, I've been missing the opportunity to meet up with friends for a good old game night. And I know that many people have been turning to the internet to play on online gaming platforms like Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator. And in fact, on Tabletopia, you can play my new two-player card game, Compromat, if you fancy. I didn't know other people have been turning to playing games with their children. But unfortunately, uh, I'm not much of a digital gamer and I don't have any children. But what I do have is dogs. So I've been looking at my collection and trying to work out which games I could possibly play with my dogs. Now, alas, unlike the average five-year-old human child, our dog struggled with the complexities of Scythe, and even my little Scythe was a stretch. So I've had to venture out into the unfamiliar world of board games designed for dogs. Now, trigger warning here, I'm going to be showing you something that might be quite unsettling for you if you like to keep your cardboard components, your snacks, and saliva very much apart. If there was any justice in the world, and if it existed, then Trixie's Flipboard would win the Hundspiel des Jahres, which would be awarded seven times in every human year. A classic Euro, as you can tell by the German writing on the box, this one's a point salad game. In Flipboard, you get to explore a myriad of different strategies, pulling different levers and pushing cubes, or treats, around the board. Of course, it doesn't really matter which strategy your dog chooses, because they all dish out copious victory points, or treats. The aspect of lifting components to reveal what's underneath is borrowed directly from the blue-orange classic Goblet. But Trixie's general approach is much more along allier lines. Affordable, less than a tenner, with fantastic mechanisms, but it ain't pretty. This game from Chinese company Adogo is essentially a streamlined version of the same game with an updated aesthetic. If Flipboard is Azul, then this one is Azul Summer Pavilion. This iteration features a central rondel mechanism, clearly inspired by Matt Gert's Navigador or Imperial. It's a slightly less challenging game than Flipboard, ideal for a slightly more intellectually challenged canine like our Whippet Fawn. It's my hope that the European release of this game will have a slightly less minimalistic box and a slightly less literal name. Alas, for now, the publisher Adogo has taken their lead, no pun intended, from NSV, the creative team behind the factually accurate moniker of 2015's The Game. Sadly, until Adogo come to their senses, we'll have to live with the less than exciting title of Dog Puzzle Feeder Toy. If you're a fan of Bird Shuffling Engine Game, or Wingspan as it was known in its later editions, then you're probably itching to get your dogs playing along with you. Sadly, the lack of opposable thumbs make clever card combinations difficult for even the most strategic dog. Fortunately, there is a dog-friendly Wingspan spin-off produced by the makers of Teddy's favourite game, Flipboard. The mistake Stonemaier Games made when producing Wingspan was constructing the majority of the components out of cardboard, thereby alienating their saliva-ridden canine audience. When played with a Norfolk Terrier, the bird box holds up to two or three turns at best. Have you ever wondered what the dice tower would look like if Stonemaier still used Kickstarter? Well, the plastic monstrosity that is the Trixie Gambling Tower might give you some idea. It's bulky. It's imposing, with callbacks to Kaplunk, 1967's answer to Potion Explosion. The gambling tower is impressive in the challenge that it presents to the average terrier. There's no doubt that this is for expert doggos only, and as such falls into the kennelspiel category. With Pet Activity Centre, we're very much at the other end of the spectrum. In the same way that Restoration Games reimagined 1980's classic Fireball Island, here, Amazon Basics presents their modern take on Hungry Hungry Hippos. In this real-time strategy game, your pet is asked to embody the role of one of the titular hippopotami. This game does not present much of a challenge, even for eight-week-old Bella. It is, however, bright and colourful and well-constructed and a fantastic gateway game. We've used it to try and entice Fawn into utilising her well-practised nose strategy in other games, such as the aforementioned Flipboard and Dog Puzzle Feeder Toy. If ever there was a board game which looks like a dog toy while also representing a significant choking hazard for dogs, it's Blue Orange's Dr Eureka. Players race to tip coloured balls out of test tubes in order to match the arrangement on the puzzle cards. It's a tough little logic puzzle with a dexterity element, and Teddy isn't naturally driven by logic. He's a thinker, for sure, but his thoughts tend to be focused less on logical deduction, more on squirrels and other garden invaders. 
but scrap the fiddly puzzle cards and you're still left with a delightful spin-off puzzle for dogs. The nose strategy isn't going to get you very far in Turnaround from Trixie. This one's all about the paws. And while Teddy sits back and contemplates his strategy, baby Bella's more inclined to get stuck in and see what happens. She's like a furry version of those irritating folk who say, shall we just start playing two minutes into a 30 minutes rules explanation? There's no doubt that Swedish designer Nina Ottersen is the days of wonder of the dog board game world. Her products scream quality, but they come at a premium. Here we're in the 20 to 30 pound bracket, but the variety of products is fantastic. My dogs love dog brick. It's another very literal name for a product, but no weirder than some of the titles in my human game collection. Dog Brick is essentially like one of those expensive board game inserts. It's all removable boxes and hidden compartments. And if you don't mind a bit of slobber on your chits, then it would even make a fantastic storage solution for Quacks of Quedlinburg. Of course, you may be new to the world of board gaming with dogs, in which case you might not want to splash out human cash just yet on these games without first tentatively dipping your toe into the water. But not to worry, there are print and play versions available. And in fact, the good news is that this game doesn't even require a printer, just a trip to the recycling bin. Some gamers will be sad to hear that rather like Pandemic Legacy, this particular game is once and done. You might be able to scrape together a second game from the same components, but you wouldn't want to pass it on as a gift. Or, you know, trade it in a maths trade. But Lidl's 9-pack is good value, and for all its limitations, you certainly couldn't call this game overproduced. Besides, every serious canine gamer knows that quality gameplay is far more important than fancy artwork and plastic components. I hope this video has given you some inspiration to revive your lagging game nights. If you enjoyed it, please check out some of my other videos on my channel on uh, YouTube, I'm Adam's Board Game Wales, on uh, Board Game Geek, I'm Adam78, and on Twitter, I'm at Board Game Wales. Thank you very much for watching, all the best.